Hey Savvy Social Workers, so this video is going to be a little Savvy short stop on some LGBTQIA information. I will try to bring a little bit more, but I know that people have been asking for this information. So we are going to discuss in this video um, primarily sex versus gender when it comes to um, the LGBTQIA population and terms that are related that you could likely see on the ASWB exam. So first we are going to define the term sex, which is the genetic anatomical characteristics with which people are born, typically labeled male or female, such as the reproductive organs, chromosomes and hormones, etc. Okay, so it is very important for you to know the definition of sex versus gender, which we will discuss here shortly. Just remember that a person's sex is their anatomical characteristics. Now, gender, on the other hand, refers to the socially constructed characteristics of women and men, such as the norms, roles, and relationships of and between groups of women and men. So, whereas, again, the sex was the anatomical characteristics the gender refers to the socially constructed characteristics of women and men. Now let's talk about the term intersex. This is when some individuals are born with a re reproductive or sexual anatomy that does not fit typical definitions of male or female. So whereas you see the symbol is just a circle, it doesn't have whether the cross or the arrow, it is just a circle um, and they refer to this as intersex. So first, let me make a correction. Um, gender expression is the manner in which people represent their gender to others, how they want to be um, seen, how they want the world to see them. So the definition that's here is still the definition um, for intersex, which I did not change. So just remember that intersex is when some people are born with anatomy that doesn't fit male or female, but gender expression is basically how you express yourself, how people express themselves, the way they want the world to see them. So just remember, it's just an expression of one's gender that they choose to have the world um, receive them by. So now here's where it really gets real important for you to know the difference between sexual orientation and gender ident identity. So sexual orientation is a person's emotional, sexual, and or relational attraction to others. And that's it. Gender identity is the personal sense of an individual's own gender. So hence the personal sense. So it's our internal sense of being male or female or something else. Because gender identity is internal, it is not necessarily visible to others. So um, remember that when we're talking about gender expression, this is the manner in which we represent ourselves. But gender identity is the internal. So gender expression is more external. Gender um, identity is more internal. So if you want if you want to remember expression, external identity, internal um, this again is our personal sense of what our gender is. Whereas again, sexual orientation, it, it is based off of your attraction to other people. Okay. So definitely know the difference between those two. Disclaimer, transferring some of these slides over. I see that the, um, the type has kind of stretched or squeezed or whatever the case, but disregard, we're going to clear that up as I'm speaking, okay, because I don't want to go back and redo it and retransfer all that over. So let's talk about a few sexuality types. And I am also going to disclaim that this list is not conclusive. So these are just the ones that I find to be most common that would be good for you to know. Um, feel free to do your own extra research if you want to know others. But these are some of the most common types um, that either people have told me that they have seen on the exam or just some common types that I hear that I feel like will be good to know um, in general as a social worker and as well for the exam. So asexuality. This is uh, a person who are persons who experience little or no sexual attraction to others of any gender. Bisexuality is a romantic or sexual attraction or behavior toward both males and females. So asexual, 
no attraction bisexual means of course bi means two or both so that means we're attracted to both male and females heterosexuality is a romantic attraction or a sexual attraction between people of the opposite sex or gender so such as a male and a female homosexuality will be the opposite of that where you have a sexual or romantic attraction between members of the same sex or gender so that will be um male and male or female and female then there's demisexuality which is a sexual orientation in which an individual does not experience primary sexual attraction so the this type of attraction is really based off of um the immediate observable characteristics such as the appearance or a, a person can smell a certain way and is experienced immediately after the first encounter Okay, so it's not primarily a sexual attraction. It is based off of the way the person looks or the person smells. And it's like as soon as you see them or as soon as you get that whiff of them, um, then you're attracted to them. So that is demisexuality. Now, pansexuality is the um, sexual, romantic or emotional attraction towards people of all genders. So asexual you just um, you have little to no sexual attraction at all. Pansexual, you are attracted to all genders. So it's not like an either or um, a male or a female. It's just all genders. Questioning. Questioning um, is a term to describe individuals who are unsure about their sexual orientation or their gender identity. And then, of course, their sapiosexuality, where the individual is extremely attracted to intelligent people. So it has nothing to do with their physical appearance, not the sexual attraction, but they are attracted to a person intellectually. And that is sapiosexuality. And in this final slide for this portion of the LGBTQIA information, we're going to discuss some gender identity types. OK, so first you need to know what gender nonconforming means. Gender nonconforming refers to a person who either by nature or by choice does not conform to the gender based expectations of society. OK, so if society says oh, you should be a female, you should dress like a female, they don't conform to that. They conform to whatever it is that they feel. So it's not like they're conforming to either um, a male type or a female type. Cisgender. So this one is pretty common. Of course, um, people have seen this one on the exam. And this just refers to people whose gender identity or expression does not differ from um, their assigned sex at birth. So basically, if you were born um, a female with female characteristics or whatever, you that's what you go by. So that's referred to as cisgender. OK, now transgender. We want to pay very close attention to this. Um, it describes people whose gender identity or expression is different from what was assigned at birth. So this is opposite of cisgender. OK, so when I think of transgender, just think of transitions. Usually these are people that transition to express their gender identity through various changes. So this could include uh, wearing clothes, um, changing their physical appearance um, and all of that to align with their internal sense of gender okay so although most people think of trans men and women when hearing the word transgender this is where it's important um this term all term also encompasses people who identify as a gender other than male or man or woman okay okay including non-binary and gender fluid which we will get to in a minute so transgender and just the word trans are two different um, things. So I know a lot of times people will say trans for short or transgender, but they're actually um, two different things. So trans is more of an inclusive term that covers those who identify as non-binary and those who are genderless. Transgender is when somebody, uh, a person trans transitions to um, a different gender so they are still claiming and representing a gender versus someone who's just trans they are non-binary or genderless okay so um, let's talk about agender okay so just kind of like asexual it was just little or no sexual attraction agender 
does does not have any particular gender so no gender at all so just like if anything was prefixed with a just no so asexual not sexual at all a gender not identifying with any gender by gender same thing as bisexual um it often displays cultural masculine and feminine roles so it's like two genders so they display both masculine and feminine that is by gen by gender so you will also see other words that kind of go around in the community some are um accepted some um sometimes they're said as derogatory but most of these are mainly um, accepted in the community so if you um, hear words like butch this normally refers to women especially lesbians um they tend to use this term to describe the way they express their ma masculinity so these are the women that are uh, primarily masculine um they can uh, refer to themselves as um, a butch okay so then we have stud studs are referred to black masculine identifying lesbian women okay so I guess a butch can be in either race a stud is specifically a black masculine identifying lesbian so now that leads us to gender fluid okay gender fluid has no gender identity and their presentation shifts between society's expectations of gender so when i think of gender fluid i think of you know something that's flowing just kind of going with the flow kind of going back and forth or whatever so that's gender fluid it um it has a gender identity and presentation that shifts sorry about that i may have said that wrong just a minute ago but it has a gender identity and presentation that shifts between societies or outside of it can be either between or outside of society's expectations of gender so it just kind of flows think of like i said when you think of fluid just think of the gender flowing um outside of what society expects gender to look like or what gender to what gender um should be okay um non-binary non-binary does not experience gender within the gender binary so it's kind of like genderless okay queer is an umbrella term that describes anyone who isn't exclusively heterosexual or cisgender so um sometimes i know like a while back queer was one of those words that were ostracized but i know that it's becoming a lot more acceptable now um so um just know that it's pretty much a term for anyone that is not um either heterosexual or cisgender which um, they also like to refer to as straight. Okay. Um, and then last but not least, two spirit. So if you see anything, this is more of a cultural, um, a cultural term. Two spirit, it's an umbrella term that encompasses different sexualities and genders in indigenous Native American communities. So just think of two spirit. Um, this is where um, the Native Americans, this is how they um, their terms for it. So I guess, you know, technically you wouldn't, um, be referred, they, they don't refer to themselves, I guess, as bisexual or transgender, whatever the case, they, um, refer to that, that dynamic as being two spirit. So I hope this video helps a little bit with some of the terms, um, and just actually being able to distinguish um, some of the things that I will recap that I feel like was um, a little bit more important is for you to know the difference between sex and gender um, and also knowing the definitions of sexual orientation and gender identity, knowing um, what gender expression is and gender identity is, because these are some of the things that I know people are saying that they've seen on the exam. Definitely know cisgender, transgender, but again, um, if you have to pause or go back or replay, please make sure you understand the difference between transgender and trans um, because that was actually something new to myself as well. Gender fluid has also been something that I know for sure that has been seen on the exam. Um, and the two spirit also was something, again, that was new um, for me again making sure you replay that slide with the different types of sexualities and that is not all of them again those are what i like to consider in my personal opinion um what would be the most common 
So yeah, again, I hope this video was helpful to you all um, for this portion of the exam. I am going to try to do an, uh, another portion of the exam that also has to do with LGBTQIA information. But for now, I just wanted um, this video to be specifically more about um, distinguishing the terms.